Okay, so we'd always fish clink hammers and they're fantastic flies. Hans van Klinken designed this fly that sits in the film, floats well, has a fantastic profile, and it hammers fish. But what we found was, in lower slower water, sometimes they get rejected. And I thought about it, and I thought to myself, you know, maybe it's because the fly doesn't have a lot of inbuilt mobility. Hackle fibers are fairly stiff, and that's part of their magic, because they give the fly structure, which then keeps the fly pinioned on the surface full. But they're not very mobile. So then what we did was we added a little bit of CDC under the hackle. And immediately we started converting those refusals into takes. And if you want to look at it quickly, I'm going to demonstrate this. So look at the hackle and look at the CDC and look at what they do when I blow on this fly. Can you see the hackle doesn't move? But those CDC fibers just give you a little bit of inbuilt mobility. And that's an important quality on a fly. Okay, so for this fly, very basic. For the hook, Hamakatsu C12. For yellowfish, you need a strong hook. For the body, a bite. You can use goose bites, turkey bites. Peacock bites are great. Egyptian geese, fantastic bites. Iced up. Polypropylene. And decent hackle. Okay, let's tie the fly. So we start off by, I'm going to just debulb this hook quick, like that. I'm going to use a nice light thread, a 14 aught Griffith shear, okay? I don't want too much bulk on the fly, I want to keep things thin, slick, and sexy. Okay, so, make a thread base along the entire hook shank, so you can seat materials nicely. And this is quite important. Every now and then, just unspin the thread so you keep it coming in flat. There we go. Okay. Cut off the excess. Now we take our bite. Cut it off, quite important. Don't eat it, put it in your mouth to soften it up because bites can be quite brittle. Okay, don't swallow this thing because it'll get stuck in your keister. Hmm. Okay, bite out. And Someone once commented that that can't be too hygienic. Well, I've done that a million times. I'm still alive, so it's not a problem. Now, tie the bite in like this, slide it out, and tighten. Okay, and now we're going to wrap this bite. Overlap the wrap slightly. I love the effect you get with bites. You don't have to use a bite. You can dub it or use plain thread or whatever the case is. I just like a bite because it gives me a nice body quickly. I don't have to rip things. I just tie it in once and it's done. Okay. Cut off the excess there. Okay, got a little bit of polypropylene yarn. You don't need too much. 
This is a little bit thick, so I'm going to divorce some of these fibers from the main bunch. Okay, now watch. Look at how I tie in a post. So what I do is put my thread there, put my material behind the thread, and I just slide it down. Make a wrap. So that is slap bang on top of the hook shank. I then twist this and give it a couple of figure eight wraps like that. Okay. Hold this with my right hand. And this is like super important. Make a nice thread base. Start right at the bottom. Okay. Notice how I do this. My right hand, I'm holding the material stationary and this fourth finger in my right hand collects the thread for me in between wraps and I just wrap a nice thread base this is important because you need something to wrap the hackle around if you don't do this you're going to have issues okay and I go up and then I go back Okay, one more wrap and I go down. You don't have to go wrap for wrap down because you've already done that. Now, check this out. Check how stable that post is and that's exactly what you want. Next thing, hackle. Now this stuff I get from my buddy in the States, Evan. Hmm. He breathes a bit bird. Measure the hackle. Oh, that, that's probably not good for the camera. There we go. That's great. I tie the hackle in with the shiny side facing me. So the shiny side is the side that you see when you look at the bird. And I do that so the hackle fibers face up slightly so I don't trap hackle fibers on the way down. So I'll strip these there on the left side my leading edge, I'll strip a couple of extra fibers, okay? I'll then cut this and I'll tie it in on the post with a shiny side facing me. Hold both of these materials in place and just go up the post again. You don't need to do touching wraps, why? You've already done that initially, so the post is solid. Just get the material in. Okay, now a little bit of dubbing. You can use squirrel, you can use whatever you like. I'm using a bit of ice dub. Main thing, don't use a lot. Just a little. Okay, just to give you a little bit of a thorax. Dub in front, dub at the back. Okay, now very important here. Look at where I end. At the back, bring, uh, okay, wait, that's a bit shit. bring that around at the back and let that hang. And I do that, why? To put me in position to tie off my um, hackle. Okay, see, see. Okay, now. Wrap the hackle feather down the post. I actually like doing this with my hands because I don't know but I find I've got a lot more control like this. Then just tie the hackle off on the base of the post like that and your hackle's in. Now in the old days we used to tie the hackle off in the front. Clunky. Fibers get in the way of the hook eye blah 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 blah. Don't do it. And all you do is you just do that. Now, if you wanted to finish that off, you'd have a conventional clink. But one last step. Okay, so now I'm going to use the CDC feather right there. Put that in a paper clamp. Like this. Cut it. So you just cut the stem off. end up with something like that. Cut it nice and clean. Okay. 
Now what you've got to do is you've got to split this thread. And the important thing with splitting thread is, number one, the thread has to be flat. If you let this bobbin hold it, dangle like that, it'll untwist the thread. Every time you wrap thread, it twists up, so let it untwist, and then help it along, just very gently. Put the thread over a fingernail, which will flatten it further, and then you stab it with a needle in the middle, and you just split it. Like that. Pop your CDC in the thread here, right on the edge, and there it goes. And then all you do is you twist this up. Twist it up, every now and then lift it. Keep this at a 90 degree angle to your finger. Otherwise, the stuff is going to twist up on itself and look more like a dubbing brush. You don't want that. This stuff needs to look more like a bottle brush. Okay? So you just do that. Okay, now we're going to wrap it. And when we wrap it, here's the trick. There, that little loose fiber can leave us. Brush this up. Brush up. Wrap. Brush up. Wrap. Brush up. Wrap. Brush up. And as I wrap, I let go. So I brush up and I wrap, let go. Brush up, wrap. Like that. Brush up, wrap. Like that. Brush up, wrap. And then I bring the thread behind the eye, like that. Let it flatten so it'll unspin. Preen the fly while that's happening. Let that slow down a bit. If there's the odd fiber that you want to just pluck out, you can. Okay. Hold all of this out of the way and just make a whip finish. There. Gentle. If there's any loose fibers or anything underneath here, just trim them off. Okay? Leave the post nice and long and trim. See those fibers moving? That's what you want. And this, deadly. Mm -hmm.